So today we're going to be doing a mod that works on all PS3 fats and most PS3 slims. This mod will allow you to play homebrew games, homebrew apps, backup games, ROMs, among other things on your PS3. So we're going to start off with downloading all the files that we need, starting with the PS3 exploit files. So you're going to type in PS3 exploit into Google and go to their main web page and download the Flash Writer release files and the, if you got a PS3 Slim, download the minimum version checker. If you want, you could also download the Flash Dumper files, but you don't really need to. Also download the hybrid firmware, which allows us to install the exploit. Then we're going to want to install or download a open source web server called MiniWeb HTTP Server. I find this more reliable to install the exploit than the web page provided by PS3 exploit. Again, your PS3 should be on firmware 4.85. So if it's not, go to Sony's website and download it if it's still their latest release or update your PS3, but make sure it's still their latest release and they haven't released a newer one. Then finally, you're going to download a custom firmware. If this is your first time modding a PS3, which I bet it is, then I would use Rebug. There's a lot of other firmwares out there that you could try out, but again, Rebug is the most user friendly. So type in Rebug PS3, go to the main page, and download their latest release. You'll get a text file with a link to download. So copy and paste that. And the firmware should be around 200 megabytes. Then you're going to check in just to make sure that your PS3 is on 4.85. So go to your PS3, scroll all the way to settings to your left, go to system settings, system information, and make sure it's on 4.85. Then set up your USB stick on your computer, format it to FAT32, you can name it to whatever you'd like. You should download an MD5 checker just to make sure your update files don't get corrupted. This will prevent bricks of a PS3. Then you'll want to extract your hybrid firmware. You'll get an update file and a folder with the MD5 as its name. Make sure that they match and rename the update file to PS3 update spelt without the E dot pub. Then go to your USB, create a folder called PS3 in capital letters, another folder inside there called Update in capital letters, and then copy th the hybrid firmware over that you renamed the PS3 Update, spelt without E, so PS3 Update, U-P-D-A-T dot P-U-P. Go to your PS3 and plug in your USB into the USB port that's closest to the disk drive. Once it recognizes, go over to System Update. Well, double check and make sure that it's on 4.85. System Update. You can see this is our hybrid firmware. Except whenever you install an update, make sure that you install it twice just to make sure that it, there's nothing corrupted and it installs successfully. I've sped this up to 10 times, but it should take about 10 to 15 minutes depending on your PS3. So as this goes through, I'll let you know that PS3 fats come in two different types. There's either a NAND or a NOR which means it's onboard memory is a NAND type of memory or a NOR type of memory. This is not a big deal, it just matters with the flash writer release files. 
down the road. But the PS3 Slims, they all have onboard NOR memory, but if they have a model number higher than CECH2500, then this mod won't work. If you do have a PS3 Slim, you should do this next step, which is the minimum version checker, which is a fake update file, which will tell you what's the lowest firmware your PS3 can be installed. So what you'll do is plug in your USB, go into the update folder and delete the PS3 update file that you just transferred over. Then extract the minimum version PS3 update file into that folder. Eject and go to your PS3. Your PS3 is gonna, for a second, think this is an update but it's just going to tell you that what version came with your PS3. As long as it's below 3.56, then this model will work. I'm 2.45, so obviously this will work. So go back to your computer, and we're going to set up our USB for the exploit. So format the FAT32 again and then extract the flash writer release files and extract the mini web server. Then you're going to want to see if your PS3 is NAND or NOR. Check in the description and the model number. Check the Flash 485 MD5. If it's good, transfer it over to your USB stick that you just formatted. You can double check the MD5 in the index underscore NOR and it'll tell you right there. Then you're going to want to go to the mini web folder, go to the HT docs and delete everything that's in there. Then go to the release and copy over the JavaScript file, the image file, and then the index underscore NAN or NOR, depending on your PS3, obviously. Then copy over the mini web application into a command prompt by dragging and dropping and press enter. You'll get a IP address that pops up. Then go to your PS3 and plug in the USB stick with the flash 485 on it. Make sure your PS3 is connected to the internet. See, I forgot that step. So for this the exploit to run smoothly as I'm connecting to the internet, I'm going to tell you the steps that needs to happen. On your web browser you need to set it to a blank user page. Then you're going to want to delete all the cookies, all the history, and all the catch. This will make sure that the exploit runs smoothly and there isn't any errors with the onboard memory. So I'm connected to the internet. Now I'm going to go to the web browser I'm going to set my home page to blank. I'm going to delete all the history. I'm going to delete the catch. I'm going to go back in there, search for a file, type in the IP address that the command prompt gave me, press enter. Go to the index initialize exploit. This should take up to a minute. I've sped everything up, remember. And then patch nor. This can take anywhere from a minute to ten minutes takes longer than 10 minutes, just restart your PS3 and repeat 
this whole step over. It worked. So you could turn your PS3 off and back on. You have to turn it off and on. it to fully install. Now we're going to want to install our custom firmware which is just a PS3 update. So we're going to go to the rebug pub file which is the update file. Go to our USB stick, create a folder again called PS3, another folder called update just like we did before and then copy over the rebug pub file. You should check its MD5, which is in its name. If it matches, then rename it to PS3 UPDAT dot PUP. Update without the E. It's always the same for any PS3 update file. Go to your PS3. See your USB stick. Always plug it into the port that's closest to the disk drive. Then update from storage media. Again, you should install it twice. Now once this installs, you might get an error on this screen. If you do, just copy over the pub file again and you sh it'll probably solve the problem. That's what I did. And there we go. So once the custom firmware installs, you're able to install all sorts of apps which will allow you to run unsigned code, which means you can play backup games, ROMs from different generations, different consoles. See? Rebug already instead of PS3. Scroll over, go down to Package Manager. You're going to want to go to System Storage and install Package. This will only be if you've installed Rebug as your custom firmware. If this is your first time modding a PS3, don't change any settings in here or you might brick your PS3. Double check that Cobra is enabled. And then scroll over to the very end. and enable toggle QA flag. You only have to do this once, but this will allow you to install other firmwares without corrupting your PS3's onboard history. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna release another video showing you how to set up your USB sticks or whatever, and how to fully use your PS3. Hope you liked it. Like and subscribe. <laughs>